Good morning. So we have a 2005 uh, 6.0 power stroke diesel that we're assembling. So the story on this is that it blew a head gasket and life happened for the customer and it ended up sitting for three years with coolant in the cylinder and of course you know the coolant part you know the the anti-corrosion inhibitors are going to go away in it and it pitted a couple of the cylinders and they were pretty bad so uh, took it down to the machine shop and we determined that we needed to sleeve it because it it would have gone beyond forty thousands and uh, so we sleeved the two cylinders that were pitted we wound up boring the rest of them 20 over so uh, we got 20 over oversized pistons in it so the first thing that I'm going to show you is how you install the crankshaft and line up the timing marks in this thing and it's pretty simple I have the tool the fixture for doing this but I don't use it because this is easier so the way I move this crankshaft around is I'll use a long chain on it and use cherry picker and pick a top bolt you know opposite of this dowel pin on the back and in the front you have a bolt that's pretty much at the top too and then just make sure your chain's long enough so it doesn't touch your tone ring up here and then just you know pick it up with your cherry picker and then set it down um, my cherry picker has a really slow setting on lowering so I can set it down really slow and the chain will give you enough flex to if you need to manipulate this a little bit to get your marks lined up so what I did first was I installed cam bearings of course and then I installed the camshaft so I put a mark there's my timing mark the dot right there put a paint mark brought it down so I could see it and then on this adapter which don't pull this off because this is centered and it has the proper run out in it um, there's no way you're going to get that back on there you might think you i know guys do it but there's absolutely no reason to pull this off because i'm telling you right now in between these two bolts directly behind this dowel pin is the other dot on the crank gear the crank gear is pressed on there and it's keyed to the crankshaft and then this adapter is put on there and then the it's torqued you know the run out is set on this and it's torqued so don't mess with this no reason to if you have one that's all scored up it doesn't matter because the new seal comes with a sleeve this came off of a bad crankshaft so the first thing I did was put the camshaft in and if you'll see there's a mark or a hole back there and then you have a hole in the camshaft that's directly opposite your mark up here so you see that hole there and I have a punch that fits in there nicely nice and snug so when I'm setting this down camshaft isn't going to move so when I bring this down I can you know it's hanging on the chain so I can manipulate this and get my marks lined up and as you can see my marks are lined up so that's done so we'll talk about this tone ring up here <clears throat> you want to be really careful and mindful of this don't lay this crankshaft down if you're storing it you want to stand it up I mean you can kind of lean it up against something but don't lay it down on this and be really careful of this when you're putting it in make sure that everything's lined up when you're putting this down because if you bend this especially on the side where there's no back support where this crank throw is here on the front you know if you bend this it's going to rub on the inside of the block here and then it'll come loose because it's attached down here I'm not sure what the process is that they attach these but it's not very good and if this comes loose it's going to run like shit and then you're going to need a crankshaft because there's really no way to fix that I suppose somebody really handy could weld that back on there but you know I don't know just be careful with that so you know, the next thing that I did before I put the crankshaft in is I put the bearings in the bed plate and then I torqued it on there and then I took my inside micrometer I measured my bearings the inside diameter and then I took my outside micrometer actually that one there and I measured the outside of my crankshaft and the difference between the two is going to give me my clearance my oil clearance for my bearings 
same thing on the on the rod journals. I have all my rods marked, torque the caps on with the bearing, check the inside, check the outside diameter, difference is my clearance, my bearing clearance. So if I see something that's out of whack or that I don't like, um, which I didn't on this, everything's right where I want it to be, which is from the middle down, you know, of the spec. So, you know, closer to the lower end of the spec, obviously. <clears throat> so everything makes me happy, but if I see something that doesn't make me happy, I might get a, another set of bearings. Even from the same manufacturer, they might be different sizes. You know, there's variations in manufacturing, and, and it seems to be, especially with the manufacturers, the OE manufacturers are saying, well, we have really tight tolerances. Yeah, if you're playing horseshoes or hand grenades, you know, in the, in the, out here in the real world, you know, you can get stuff a lot closer than, than they do, and that's what I like to do. So I like all of my bearing clearances so far, so I'm going to bolt the bed plate on, torque it down. That'll be done. The next thing I did was I uh, went through, of course, I mark all my pistons. This is piston number one. I checked all of my ring gaps. Ford doesn't give you a spec, but the aftermarket will give you a spec on these. And uh, for the top ring, for the center ring, and they are different, and even for your oil ring. So it takes a lot of time to do that, but uh, I like to check it. So I checked each one fit the rings, everything here makes me happy. The machine work is perfect. I mean, you did a great job of honing this thing to size. It's all really close. So, when you're installing these rods on these pistons, you wanna make sure that uh, these rods, if you look at them, they're longer on one side than the other, they're offset. This is always gonna go, the engine's upside down, this is always, the long side is gonna to go towards the outside of the block depending on which cylinder it's in or which side. Just make sure you put this in right. The pistons are marked. Uh, these are aftermarket pistons. They're made by Molly, but you know, it's the same, same company that makes them for the, the OE. So uh, it's gonna say cam side on them and then it'll ha actually have an arrow. The original pistons, you know, or if you buy pistons from Ford, they're just gonna say cam V8, and, but that's your top, so these are going to be in the top of the cylinder when I put them in, the engine's upside down. The cam is going to be facing towards the cam when I put them in, so I want to make sure I get my rods orientated right. So I got my ring gaps all set. They're, they're all in the happy place. I've got my bearing clearances all where I want them, so now all I need to do is hang the rods on these pistons and I could start slapping the pistons in it. So uh, I could could have bought a short block, of course, but the reason I did this is because this is a really low mileage engine. It doesn't have hardly any miles on it, you know, for one of these, and uh, everything was so clean inside other than the damage to the cylinders that, uh, you know, it just didn't make any sense other than the time that it takes to do this. But, you know, I know that I'm, in a happy place here with all my clearances so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing together and I know that you know with the proper maintenance it's gonna last you know hell it ought to last a good long time so um, anyway when I get it running I'll come back <laughs>